Well, welcome back. Last week, we talked about the importance of the purpose of prayer. And today, we're going to go to the next part of that, which is the confidence that we need to have as we pray. And I think that we can all agree that when we are confident in what or to who we are praying to, it changes everything and our prayers just begin to soar. And I really believe that that's what God wants us to do. When we pray to him, he just doesn't want us to have a purpose, but he wants us to have confidence that not only is he going to hear our prayer, but he's going to answer our prayer. I'm joined with two of my dearest friends, Elizabeth, who's uh-huh. part of our children's ministry, and also Pastor Ben, our youth pastor. And so I want to welcome both of you. But uh, as we do, I want to talk a little bit about um, how we gain confidence. And I think part of the way we gain that confidence is, first of all, is knowing who we're talking to. I mean, God is just not a God out there who is just, you know, sitting on his throne and watching us mess up. He's involved in our daily lives. So Elizabeth, maybe you want to help begin with how does that how does that help our confidence in knowing who God is? Well, as we've talked about before, daddy is such an enduring word that we can use with God. And when we think about our earthly fathers, they let us down. They may not be perfect. They, well, they may not be perfect. They are not perfect. Mm -hmm. They have, they have so many times in our lives, in our children's lives, we say one thing and we do another, but our God is not that person. And so we have to know his heart to be able to follow him. And so we need to know that God is a caring father who will not forget us, who is going to be there no matter what, that he has us in the palm of his hand and nothing is going to take that away from us. And that's that's one of my favorite parts is, as I've learned, is that God has my name written on his hand. You know, my wife, she when she want, makes, wants to make first she, sure she doesn't forget something, she always writes it on her hand. But I think about it that God has written my name on the palm of his hand. I am always on his mind. So, Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about when you talk about a caring father. So what does that look like to you? Well, to me, a caring father is somebody who wants to hear from their children, mm-hmm. who wants to have a relationship with their children, someone who is going to have an interest. He's, he's not a God sitting up above everybody with playing with chess pieces. He wants and has a vested interest in his children and what their success. He wants what's best for them. He wants everything that he can give them. He just wants his children to ask. Right. So Pastor Ben, um, you know, one of those stories that is one of the, the favorite stories that we get to teach is a story about when Jesus tells his disciples to go to the other side and he gets in the boat and then later he comes and he takes a nap in the boat and mm-hmm. there's this huge storm. You know, one of the things I know that you're going to talk about is what does it mean to be a consistent father? But in this story, when Jesus gets in the boat, he tells them to go to the other side. He never didn't tell them that there was going to be a storm in life. And what's he doing? He is sleeping. So tell us a little bit about the importance of, of how God is a consistent father in our lives. Yeah, as a child that grew up with a dad as a pastor, you know, um, it was drilled into my head at a young age that, you know, God is the same yesterday and today and forever. And uh, we actually even sang like a gospel chorus about it, but I won't sing Are you going to sing? I won't. Oh, okay, okay. My <laughs> wife is the singer in the family. Okay. I'm not. And that's right. You just had surgery, so you're not allowed to sing. I'm right? not allowed Praise to sing. Praise the Lord. No, right? just kidding. Thank just you. kidding. Thank you. Just right? kidding. Consistent prayers are answered. See? Um, you know, everybody always says, well, I don't feel like I, I've heard from God or I don't hear from God. And... I always say, well, maybe you've just never been in a storm where you've needed God to speak. Um, I think one of the great things about God being a consistent God is the disciples knew that they could go to Jesus. It wasn't like they had to call the Coast Guard or search and rescue or something like that. Even though Jesus at that, that point in time wasn't necessarily feeling the panic and the fear that they were, they knew who they could go to first and that, that they could go to Jesus, and then that Jesus would assert himself in the situation and change it. And I think that's one of the great things is, as we read through the Bible, we see this consistency of God that he may not give us the answer we want, but he's always gonna hear, and he's always going to react in the situation, and it's always for our best interest. 
you know, I love that, that you mentioned about the disciples knew that while they were going in the storm that they could go to Jesus. Yeah. And I think sometimes we forget that while we are in our storms, we have to go to yeah. Jesus and we have to ask him to bring, to get involved. And once he's in our storm, we get to experience the peace that goes beyond all understanding. So, all right. So the next part of it then is, you know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 5, it says, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, nor even relax my hold on you, assuredly not. So tell me, Elizabeth, when, when you talk about a father who is close, what, what, what does that mean to you? Well, I love the fact that he repeats himself three times because yeah, what parent hasn't? Um, <laughs> it says, I will not, I will not, I will not. So he's always going to be right there, right there. That I love that you used an um, example about uh, Harper jumping off the stage into your arms. And he, she knows that you're going to be right there. Yeah. And that's the same love and, and safety and closeness that we can have with God. That he's right there to catch us, right there to hear us, right there to answer our prayers as we come to him. Very good. I love that. So, Pastor Ben, I want to ask you, um, have you ever come down to want to visit me or talk to me in my office and my door's been closed? And what has maybe been one of the things that maybe Cheryl has said to you about why you can't talk to me? Um, I, uh, well, I mean, that's kind of hard. It's kind of a difficult question is it ever, to ask. Is it ever like, <laughs> right? well, he's too busy? Well, for me, every time I come near your office, I hear all the doors close. So sometimes <laughs> I don't, you know, now it's... It's almost like my greeting. It's like, oh, oh we got Pastor caught. Ben is coming. Close the door. Shut but... the doors. Yeah, no. um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually there's there's a reason why you can't see me, and it's not because you don't love me or want to spend time with me, but usually there's other things that you're addressing or dealing with or stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, sometimes. So how does that relate to your relationship in prayer with your Heavenly Father? I mean, it's like... Is God ever too busy to to deal with our problems? No. And I think it's 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 something that I had to learn at a young age is I can put my trust in you as my pastor, but I don't put all of my trust in you for every situation that I go through. Mm -hmm. You know, God is never too busy for me. There's never anything that distracts his time from me. There's no reason why I can't come to him, why I can't address him. Um, and from the simplest of prayers to the to the biggest of moments, he's just always there. Um, I'm I tell people I'm so glad for Bluetooth in cars now because every time I drive, I am talking with God. And at least now I have the excuse if somebody sees me that maybe I was just on a phone call. But I mean, you can ask my wife and my parents. I mean, every time I'm driving, I'm talking to God. And I, I talk to him just like we're talking now. And I talk to him about my day. And I talk to him about our students and my kids and Marcella and my parents and just everything that's going on. And, you know, every now and then it's praying that my truck will start. Um, but it's so great that you can come to him at any time about anything. So Elizabeth, I have five grandchildren, and one of the things that I love it is when they come to me and they have a need, and I get to meet that need. I think sometimes when we go to God, we think we're bothering Him. As Pastor Ben, you know, mm -hmm. we think He's too busy, and we don't want to ask Him for something, and we're missing something there that I think is very important. Maybe you can expound on that. Well, God loves to meet our needs. And when we don't ask, we don't allow him to. We're like, like, eh, that pride gets in our way and we don't allow him to do what great things he can do. I love in Matthew 7, 11, that says, if you then, though you were evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? And that's the key. We, we mess up all the time and we wanna give our kids good things. But God is perfect, and we don't ask. We just have to ask. Yep. So, Pastor Ben, when you grew up, mm -hmm. just like I did, we heard that quit crying, big boys don't cry. Yep. Quit being a baby. And so when we talk about, you know, when we come to God and we've got hurts, 
And sometimes it's like, you know, somebody, we think that God is this, this huge monster that says, you know what, put on your big boy pants and, and move on. So what's wrong with that kind of thinking? Um, I, I think, like you said, we're very often as guys, we're kind of taught to suppress all of our feelings. Um, and one of the things I love is, as I've learned about Jesus being fully man and fully God, and, you know, the Bible says that he's close to the brokenhearted. You know, he experienced what we experienced. You know, Jesus cried. Jesus laughed. Jesus experienced emotions. And, and when we understand that God invented all of these emotions for us to experience all of these different things. I remember when Marcella went into labor with Wyatt. I had no idea what to do. And I just remember praying, dear God, yay, amen, because I really didn't know what else to pray. And I was feeling a flood of emotions as I was trying to be, you know, sympathetic to my wife and, and not say anything stupid, which I'm really well known for in those sorts of situations. And so just knowing that I could bring my hurts and my pains, my my disappointment, my bad days, my my good days, those those words that hurt, you know, those situations that we walk away from and we don't understand. I don't have to try and shove that down and just pretend like it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I can take that to a God that not only hears it, but then helps me heal through it. Very good. It's good. And, you know, the Bible even talks about that God collects our tears. Yeah. And when, when we hurt, he hurts. And that's the same thing with our kids or our spouses. When they hurt, we hurt. That's what it means to, yeah. to be one. All right. Well, Elizabeth, um, one last thing that I wanted to share with you or talk a little bit about to you is that, you know, um, the Bible tells us that nothing is impossible for God. So what does that look like? I mean, you know, there are things that we go through in life and, and we have huge problems. Maybe it may be a health issue. Maybe it may be a cancer or something like that. Or we're going through a real trial. And in our mind, we're thinking, okay, nothing is impossible for God, but... Maybe, maybe this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is we have to cling to the truth and we have to be in the Bible so that we know who God is so that we can hold on to those things that we know are true. So those moments when we doubt, we can know that God is a competent father. He can do anything. He can handle every situation. Our fears, our worries, our, the unknown. Mm -hmm. He is in control of all of those pieces. No matter what we think, he has it already figured out. That's right. And it doesn't matter if you're a believer or a non-believer, God controls everything and God wants us to become more and more in his, the, son, the image of his son. And so God is for us. He's not against us. And so I want to remind all of us tonight is that when we talk about the purpose of prayer and then the, the confidence in prayer, remember that we have a caring father that we have a consistent father, we have a close father, and we have a competent father. And so as you go in time, in your time of prayer and in your time of need, remember, yes, there's a purpose of prayer. We're hardwired for that. But when we go, we go with confidence because God is waiting to hear your requests. God bless your time tonight as you make your discussions.